welcome to another episode of the Red Arrow Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Marco, with my properly accessorized co-host, Jessica. Love your necklace, Jessica. Thank you. What is it? It is the chemical symbol for whiskey. Well, it's a the molecule in there. Whatever. Yeah. Monocle. 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 A monocle. It has, it's a... Uh, um, a molecule of whiskey. A very appropriate. And as I you, don't know. I'm not having well, any Well, that's what I was just going to go to. You've got the molecule for whiskey. And what are you drinking tonight? Vodka. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> With lemonade it's delicious what are you drinking what, what kind of lemonade um you know one of those icy things okay not not standard lemonade that's full of carbs no no it's the zero carb icy whatever thing it's classic the, lemonade i think is what it's called all the flavor of lemonade without all the unnecessary macros yeah it's great cool what you got whiskey what kind of whiskey? Traverse City Whiskey Company's straight bourbon whiskey. It's just their, I, I really hate to say it this way, but it really is just their plain Jane. It's their standard go-to whiskey. It's not a single barrel. It's not barrel proof. It's not some special batch. It's just their standard bourbon that they, they turn out. And it's good. So I'm just having that with a few ice cubes. It does taste it. like corn. There, there is a little corn in the it mix, has a corn, I do believe. a corn flavor that you can taste. And it, this is what we had last night, right? It has, it's a mix of corn, barley malt, and premium rye. Ooh. Yes. So cheers to that. Cheers. Oh, that was weak. Let's try it again. My hand was in the way. <sighs> <clears throat> cheers. Cheers. Ooh. Better. It feels like it's been a while since we've done this. Just a smidge. Hey, things got crazy busy, and it was just like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Instead of rushing an episode, let's just take a week off. It's been a while since we took a week off. Yeah. But much to discuss. Much going on. First off, how you feeling? How are the scratch marks? How are the bite marks? <laughs> How's the <laughs> a- kicking you've been getting at work? <laughs> and not from your coworkers. It's, it's healing. Things are healing nicely. I think I'm going to have some leftover scarring, but it's... It's going to be fine. I mean, we've spoken about this before. We we did an entire episode on your work as a behavior analyst and how sometimes getting scratches, bites, or punches or things thrown at you is an occupational hazard of your job. Yeah, it it just is. It's part of, it comes with the territory. Um, I have a couple of, of newer kids that are, that can be aggressive when they are upset. There is an adjustment phase. There for sure is. Um, I'm confident that we're about to turn a corner, though, at least with one I mean, of them. Better. So. I don't know if you can. Well, <laughs> Either you're going to turn a corner or you're not going to make it. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I got scratched um, in the face. And in the face. Yeah, that kid actually like got me from the forehead straight down over my eye onto my cheek and I was rocking like a scar scratch like from the Lion King for a couple of days until it healed. That was it was impressive. Mm-hmm. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's not, we're not talking about like a scratch. We're talking about <clears throat> four or five yeah, parallel no, it scratches. Was, you could for yeah. sure tell it was tiny fingers that made <laughs> the scratch on my face. Right now, my neck is all <laughs> ripped up, and my arms are a mess. But it's it's fine. It made because we just went out tonight and did our photo shoot for our Christmas card. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know we're a ways out, but like, look, you got to take it, and you have to have time to edit the photo, and then we got to put it on a card and send it off and get it printed, and then eventually mail it off to people. And uh, you know. Christmas card people know the routine. It's people it's a, know how Christmas yeah. cards are made. But you had to pick out an outfit. The one went with like the theme, and we did an episode on picking outfits and all that stuff. Yeah. But uh, also have to, had to have uh, sufficient coverage to cover the scratches and the yep. bites and the everything else, the wounds. <laughs> also, there's Photoshop, so it's. Yeah, but it, people will never even know five more minutes in the closet to find something or how long in Photoshop to clone out the scratch marks. Scratches are pretty easy to clone. Well, you're not helping my story. Sorry. Yeah. But after that, we the kids did great. Kid, they did so good. Kid number four had her full personality on show and it was 
coming up on camera. Yeah, God, she's she's such a little Hamlet. And then we went out to dinner, and oh, it was hard trying to explain, especially the kid too, why we were looking out at a dining room that was mostly empty, yet we had to wait forty five minutes to be seated. Um. That was hard for me to explain to myself in my own head, so... <laughs> well, the hostess did, sure didn't do any help in explaining it. She did not. Her uh, her wait staff was not happy with her. The customers weren't happy with her. She was busy playing on her phone. Mm-hmm. But what I got out of it in our 45 minutes there was they only had three waitresses. Yeah. And th- those women were working their tails off to cover as many tables as they possibly could. Yep. And they just couldn't cover the whole restaurant. The hostess could have done them a favor by explaining that to the customer so that they didn't have to try to figure this out on their own. Yeah, that would have been good. But we went down to, uh, what is that place called? They just re, they renovated it. They rebranded it. I don't know if it's new, same owners or new owners, but it's down in Union Pure, Michigan. I think it's Union Pure Social. Yes. Yeah. The bar section used to be what, like, Steve's place or it was some like martini bar thing. Frankie's. Oh, that's what I thought yeah. it was. It used to be Frankie's. It was a martini bar. Now it is a um, just you know, gastro pub type thing, but family friendly now. Yeah. And so we decided to go try it and the food was delicious. Yeah, I have no complaints about the food. It was it was great. The kids all enjoyed their food. Uh, they kept apologizing. Oh, the kitchen's backed up. I really didn't think it was that long of a wait for the food. No, that and, was like on a par with how it usually is when we go to restaurants. Right. So I think on a Saturday night. I mean, if the kitchen staff was short staffed too, they definitely were working their butt off because the food was flowing out of that kitchen. Yeah. And the wait and wait staff was very receptive, very nice. Just kept on to help us. Very friendly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought they did a great job. Yeah, really the only complaint was the hostess who really didn't do much to help anyone she else. She just she needs to be better at communicating. Yes. That would be good. And eye contact. Maybe stop staring at your cell phone and okay. work. But the the renovation inside I like the updated decor. Yeah, it's nice and bright in there. Because you and I had gone once before and while they were trying to do some um kind of fun gastro pub type stuff with the food. We got stuck on like the decor. I was like, this is kind of like 70s, 80s, it was, 90s. It was old. Yeah. It just looked old. Now it looks fresh. It looks modern. Um, Our kids were super impressed with the um, asymmetrical plates. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was like hand, uh, hand turned pottery plates. It was fun. I definitely go back, not on a Saturday night. No. And maybe we might like the whole COVID mess uh, alleviate a little bit. So that maybe people start coming back to work so that they aren't, <laughs> those who are there aren't so stressed out. Yes. Um, again, that wait staff did fabulous. And our kids held it together too, given that they had just finished a photo shoot and it's and chilly. it was cold. Because we're getting into fall and they were up late last night because Kid One had her debut, her halftime debut at a football game. Yeah. When marching out there. The band. In the band. She's a percussionist and she was playing the bass drum and had so she had to wear the bass drum. Mm-hmm. She told me today it was really heavy. Yeah. She was like, oh, my back is so sore. This is so heavy. It's the smallest of the bass drums, too. I know. But, but they played the, hey, the middle school got to go out with the high school. They played their song, you know, lemon in a pear, lizard in a chair. <laughs> You got any other puns to go with living on a prayer? Sorry, no, I don't. Mm -mm. They did great. Yeah. So after we left the football game, we didn't stay for the whole thing because it got very chilly very quickly. And also they were getting their butts kicked and it was just sad. Well, we don't really really know anybody on the high school squad, but it's very appropriate that we, uh, I mean, she performed at halftime. So we we made it through halftime where... (laughs) They did living on a prayer. We were halfway there to the end of the game. We're like, good enough. Let's yeah. Go. So then we went home and uh, my parents came with us. So I was all excited to show them my new pumpkins that I bought uh, to decorate the house. Halloween. They really like the light up pumpkins Halloween that we have on the mantle. Definitely upon us. Yes. We're still pulling things out of the totes, trying to get up, you know, keep up with us, even though Halloween week is here. 
we still haven't done the blow ups in the yard. We have got Halloween lights to put up. I haven't put the little thin plastic things over the windows in the garage and some of the other rooms where the light shines behind it. And it looks like, like zombies are coming through the curtains. Oh, are you going to do those this year? Yeah, we haven't done those I, in a long time. If I can get time to get it to it, it's been busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my favorite part about spooky season movies it's the movies. And I'm really excited that you're playing for hockey games tomorrow because that leaves lots of time for me to watch all the scary things. Um, it's pretty much nonstop horror movies for me from October 1st until the end. So that's fun. I When did we watch the new Halloween movie? Was that last, last weekend? Week. I think it was last weekend. It's all blurring together. Yeah, that was pretty watched, good. What was it? Halloween Kills is yes. the new one? Mm-hmm. We watched that. I liked it. I don't know if you liked it because you didn't see the one before it, but yeah, it was all right. I mean, like, really, do I need it's, to see it? It's the same thing. I Michael mean, Myers walks around and kills people. Then you think he's dead at the end, but he's not because he comes back for another movie. <laughs> it's been that way since 1978. It's true. Um, Spoilers. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, I was picking up kid number one from one of her hockey games with you on Sunday and I like I walked in to get her and I was like, you got your stuff. Are you ready? You ready? Let's go. Let's go. We got to go home now. And there is some man. I don't know who he was. Um, just, he uh, looked like a hockey he, man. He looked like a man. And he was like, Bella, you're er, no from what was that? Mad TV? Miss Swan? He looked like a man. <laughs> Miss Swan. So horrible. <laughs> um, so inappropriate. <laughs> no. He, he goes, kid number one, aren't you going to stay and hang out and drink your root beer and like watch some of the other games? And she was like, no, we got to go. And he goes, why? And she goes, my mom's got to get home to watch horror movies. And the guy, like he stopped and he was like, what are, are you serious right now? And I turned around and I was like, I'm completely serious right now. We have to go so I can go home and watch scary movies while my husband is here. So we got to go. <laughs> You're not the only uh, spouse who watches scary, or in your case, it's scary, but other ones like trashy, like Lifetime movies. Oh, sometimes it's trashy like, movies, yeah. but you, in October, it's horror movies. So. But it's like, oh, you're going to be at hockey. I get to watch whatever I want tonight without any complaining. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so when you told me I'm playing four games tomorrow, I was like... <sighs> so many things i could watch but you It'll need to you do need to take a, a break to come get kid uh kid number one yeah i will because it'll like, be a fast break though <laughs> well her like our game together is the second game of the night oh so just come in get her and go but i would take her home when i'm done but that's way that's too, too late, late for a seventh for, grader she's got school so in fact, last week she didn't play because I had the late game and mm -hmm. it was too late for her. She ended up playing uh, bad hockey, the beginner adult hockey at the beginning. So I, I took her and I just sat and watched and worked on my computer for a while and then took her home, hung out for a while, and then went back to the rink for the late game. Mm -hmm. This time I'll just be there the whole time. But uh, it's been so long since we podcasted. The game, bef the week before that, she played and she played great and we got a win. Yay. And she got her first ever beer league win. The 12 year old did. Boop, boop. And it was, it was like her version of the game. Out of the three time slots, it was the latest I'll let her play. So when we got done, she didn't get a celebratory root beer. But it was pretty awesome. Uh, we won nine to six. And it was actually shouldn't have been that close because two of the goals that they get in on her one was hit with this tomahawk of a high stick like it wasn't even like tomahawk it was not even remotely it looked like something out of lacrosse it was not That's even funny. remotely like oh is it just a hair too high no this thing was up in the air there was another one where they entered the zone off sides didn't call it and then there was a hand pass didn't call it and she's like that should have been blown dead and that's a good lesson for her that keep on playing hmm. So really, it should have only been four goals against her. And on top of that, we had three goals not allowed. One, I shot it, and while the puck was in the air, the goalie has this thing he does where he flicks his foot and will knock the goal off, just a nudge. So, oh, the goal post off. Now, like this, the week that uh, Kid 1 didn't play, mm -hmm. that happened uh, in favor of us. We're like, nope, shouldn't be allowed. They're like, yep, it's good. And we're like, wait a minute. When it happened to us the previous week, when I, it was my goal, it got <laughs> waved off. We also had one where, like, oh, the goalie saved it. It's under his foot. And, like, his foot is in the middle of the back of the net. That's crap. And then we had another one like that where, like, oh, he's got it. And, like, 
in the net he's got it like oh it's in his glove and like his whole arms across the line so it really could have easily been uh 12 to 4 victory in favor of kid number one so that's pretty awesome Mm -hmm. and now we're left we only have one goalie left in the league that doesn't have a win and it's not the 12 year old Woot! so yeah and with all that uh winter hockey's gearing up for the kids it's been a busy day today i was on the ice uh 8 30 this morning then i was there for that was u8 with kid number three then i stayed and helped learn to play then i came home for a little bit then i went back with the irish twins and <laughs> yeah it's been it's been a day so i'll be back at the rink tomorrow and what I time have, do you I, start tomorrow my first game the puck drops at five thirty. okay yeah but I so have, i'll be watching not we have so scary friends who aren't here first. in town ones we know from other phases are left they're like why can't we get a hold of marco in the evenings especially like sunday evening <laughs> Because one, I'm in like cone of silence because there's no cell phone there signal in there, no and signal. I'm in there like all night. You like it? I do like it. I love it. Someday you'll come watch me play again. It's been yeah. a while. It was before COVID. Yeah. It's cold in there, like really, really freakishly cold. I'm pretty sure Mr. Rink owner keeps it colder than it needs to be. Bring in a there. bring a no. hot chocolate with maybe some whiskey in it. Nah. Hot toddy. No. Howdy, howdy. If I do that, then I won't be able to leave, even after your game. I'll drive you home. Lies. Yeah. No. I'll even, like, shower so you can stand to be in the car with me without <laughs> having the windows down. <laughs> or I could stay here and watch scary movies by myself. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. Anything else we need to talk about before we get into our topic for the night? Since we talked about it last time, how are your cross-country kids doing now? Well... They uh, they actually are doing well. They're, um, several of them have had breakthroughs, and some of the ones who are getting frustrated have finally starting to show progress. Where, so I'm happy for them. And actually, this morning I got a text. Actually, well, I got the text this afternoon. I think he sent it this morning. Mm-hmm. One of my former runners uh, sent me one as, hey, I just wanted to let you know. Uh, he, I guess he walked on the cross-country team, and he had his first ever college cross-country race. And he wanted to let me know how he did. So that was really exciting. It was exciting to hear from him. It's exciting to hear he's doing well. He uh, it sounded a little frustrated that it wasn't the most amazing race ever, but he's only been on the team for a week. And it's a 10K. Yikes. Yeah, it's not the 5Ks of high school. Oh, it's, it's a, that's a lot of running. <laughs> yeah. So the first three miles were great. The second three miles, not so much fun. Oh, I'm like, oh you'll be fine. Um, he will be fine, but still, that's that's a lot. I was more. really, I was really proud of him. Uh, that one that he's doing it, and two that he succeeded and had a decent time, and three that one or well, three that he actually reached out to me and let me know because like, yeah, that's I'm excited sweet. for him. That's yeah. good. So the cross country kids are doing well. Awesome. Happy for them, but totally engrossed in hockey right now. Yep. We got like all sorts of out of town stuff coming up. But that will be tales for another podcast. We need to get into our main topic for tonight, which is all about, and it fits in well with the things that have been busy, 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 and crazy busy in front of the computers and at work. And it gets in the way of exercise, of fitness, of being active, of moving around. So that's what this episode's all about, is how to sneak physical activity into your day when you really can't go, yeah, I'm going to go spend, you know, Whatever, I'm trying to be facetious with it, but like, I mean, go to the extreme, like six hours in the gym. No one has time for six hours in the gym unless you're a professional athlete or an actor getting ready for a role. Physical trainer, someone's paying you to be in there all the time. But if you have an office job, you you only have so much time to dedicate to exercise. Mm-hmm. So what do you do when it gets crazy busy? You don't have time for that. You can't just be completely sedentary, stationary. It's not healthy. How can you sneak a little bit in? And it almost reminds me because we're parents sneaking the veggies into the dinners so the kids don't realize they're eating vegetables. <laughs> this is kind of like that. It's how do you sneak the exercise in there so you're getting some physical activity. Granted, it's not as great as going for a run or a high speed um, bike ride or you know cycling or spinning. But mm-hmm. if you can't do all that, what can you do to kind of sneak something? Because something's better than nothing into your day. And that's what we're going to speak about. And we're going to call it Move It. 
and keep it simple. Like to move it, move it. Yeah, I was thinking that too when I came up with it. So like, we're going <laughs> to go with the, the two-word title tonight. Let's play some segue music and we'll get right into that. Jessica, are you ready to get moving? Uh, okay. <laughs> so obviously this doesn't apply. We were speaking about uh, wait staff earlier. They're moving it all night. They're yes. walking. They're carrying stuff. They have long shifts too. So Yeah, they're on their feet mm-hmm. and they're carrying really those heavy trays and they're balancing it. Obviously mm-hmm. there's other careers like we've got a friend right now who's doing something that I used to do. He's on a survey crew. Yep. He's, he's getting walking pl- all day he, long. Yeah, he's getting plenty of physical activity. Mm-hmm. But we have lots of friends like us where I mean, they're at their desk shop. Now, obviously, sometimes you got to go running down the hall because someone's throwing a temper tantrum and you got to respond to it. So you, you get those moments. Yeah. But there's other times where you're filling out insurance reports all it's, day. It's a lot of sitting. I sit and I watch kids. I sit and I watch my therapist. I sit and I do paperwork. I sit and I read journal articles. I sit a lot. And I get times where I get hit up and it's just like, <laughs> it's another meeting or it's I got to proofread something or I got to review something or I got to write a review of something Mm -hmm. and it can easily set itself up for or stare at data and plain Excel and how, you know, you can get get sucked into it. How do you get that, that movement in there so that you kind of almost trick yourself to you can get into something. So that's where we're at. We've got 10 tips and this isn't like, Oh, you got to do all 10. Mm -hmm. If you can find one of these to apply, Good for you. Mm -hmm. You can apply two of them. Even better. So hopefully in this list of 10, there is something you can find and add to your life and create those healthy habits to improve your quality of life just ever so little here or there. Mm -hmm. And really, it's not about the wholesale giant changes. It's just do what you're doing and change this or that. And that's what we got here is a few tips you can use, a few life hacks to just ever so slightly Make these minor changes and hopefully set yourself up for success Yep, and better uh, quality of life and health. So number one, Jessica, what do we have on here? Take the stairs. Yes. This is something that when we were in Virginia, I used to be up and down on elevators all the time. And when I decided like I enough's enough, I mean, I'm 325. I'm not going to make it much longer. I need to start taking the stairs. The hard part was when I was that heavy and I would have to take the stairs a a flight or two. Big sweaty mess afterwards. Like I'd show up in the conference room like, what the hell happened to you? (laughs) I went up one flight of stairs in a suit. (laughs) Like, oh my God, are you going to die? But Probably. (laughs) It's, you know what, it was better for me. And if I consistently did it, it would have been even better for me. Now that I've dropped a bunch of the weight, it helps me get moving. Mm Mm-hmm. You in the office, not really an option since you're on a one-story building. There are no stairs. I guess. So in your case, I this one doesn't I would have to come really up apply. with a bunch of different reasons to go to the basement like 12 times a day. But to get to the basement, you have to go outside. It's getting cold and that doesn't sound like fun. Right. Also, there's like spiders in there. No. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, you don't have to do all <laughs> these, but it's just try to apply. Yeah. All right, if you can find something to apply. And if you're in an office building with stairs, take the stairs. Absolutely. Get those extra steps. Get a little bit more exercise than just standing in an elevator. And especially since most people not just stand there, they stand there leaning on the wall. Yeah. Use those core muscles. Use those leg muscles. Get a little. You don't have to run the stairs. <laughs> nope. Just but take one them at, at a good time. pace. Yeah. What's number two? Number two is the... <clears throat> Number two are the move and stand reminders that you might have on your fitness watch. Activity tracker. Activity tracker, Fitbit, Apple Watch, whatever. Ours are Apple Watches. They are now. They are magnificent. We used to have Fitbits. By the way. I don't even remember if my Fitbit used to give me these reminders, but I know that my Apple Watch does, and it's great. Mine did, and I turned them off. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Because I found them annoying. But I hadn't fit and figured out how to do it on the Apple Watch. And it's like, you know what? It is good that once an hour, get your butt up, yeah. move around. I like mine because, like I said, I sit a lot at work. So I like when it will just ding at me and 
flashes up there. It says, it's time to stand up. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm going to go do a lap around the building and see if anybody needs anything. This is a great way for uh, me to, like a little reminder to, one, go check on my staff and my kids, and two, get my butt out of my chair. So Yeah, and in my case, it's just like, you know what? Because I can be, wow, you're really loud on that drink. I'm so like, sorry. But why I can just completely be engrossed in data mm-hmm. Or a project or brainstorming or some new program, putting it all together. It's a reminder of take a moment, blink, because I will forget to blink, which also create leads to headaches and dry eye and everything. It's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, but it exists and I'm weird like that. But also just get up and move, check on whatever, anything else, check phone messages, everything else, and then get back to it. But pretty simple and pretty, you know, especially with the, uh, I mean, you can just set a reminder on your phone once an hour to ping you. But the nice thing about the activity trackers are if you've been already been up and moving, it doesn't disturb you. Nope. It's just so like, hey, this one hour span, you haven't moved. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should get up and move. And if you've been active, it's like, peace hey, out. You're good. you're good. So I like that. Uh, I love reminders. I love prompts. Yeah, prompts. Yeah. Prompty prompts. Me too. Jessica, number three kind of applies to you more or less. Yeah. Um. So number three is use a standing desk or a yoga ball chair. Do you have a yoga ball chair? Well, I don't have a yoga ball chair, but we have giant yoga balls in the playroom And sometimes we have staff that have like back problems. And so they will take the giant yoga balls and they will sit on them during their session with their kid. And sometimes I have to sit with those kids so they can go to the bathroom. And I'm always excited to do it because then I get to sit on the ball and bounce. And it is so much fun. And it's also good for my thighs. Well, it's also good for your core muscles too. Yeah. Your abs, your lower back, all of that. Uh, because you do have to balance so you don't fall off it like you're some sort of drunk person trying to sit in a normal chair. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually what it's like sitting at the table sometimes at lunch with uh, kid number um, four where she's sitting there talking to you and she's also tired and like we might kick on something on TV and she'll be watching it and eating and not paying attention to what she's doing. All of a sudden, like I'll be you know cooking an omelet or something and all of a sudden I hear this thunk. I look over and she's like just staring at the ceiling with her eyes wide eyed like you okay I'm yeah, okay yeah did you get a little scared yeah I got a little scared <laughs> she just randomly falls out of her chair <laughs> yeah if she's if she's really tired and she's just engrossed in the TV show and not paying attention where she's going especially if she's turned 90 degrees in the chair so if the chair um so that she can sit with her legs so there's nothing behind her and she'll lean back and forget that the back of the chair is actually by her right shoulder. <laughs> yeah. Because she's so little. Funny. <laughs> yeah. So she goes to put her back against the back of the chair and there's nothing she's, there. And like slips <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Literally flips out. That's, yeah, that's and There's good. usually a hug and then she's back at it. But um, with these yoga ball chairs, it, it helps the core muscles. Yeah. And you're getting some exercise and you're having fun while you're you're working it it. i mean granted you're bouncing it like somehow you like swallowed too much chewing gum as a kid and farted but remember those little bouncy ball things it was like a big ball like we had the one with i don't remember what they were called but yes it had mickey mouse's head and um his ears were the handles and you like sat on basically straddling his neck and would bounce up and down yeah south park made fun of it with um I think all the guys were putting their their testicles in the microwave to like give themselves what? cancer. It's South Park. Uh, I, it was so they could get like recreational weed or something. Oh, yeah, sure. Anyway, it's South Park again. But they were bouncing on them, kind of like these things we had as kids, as children of the the eighties, where it was in like I think my sisters had them in the seventies, but it was like a big bouncy ball with a character head on it with handles. And it was essentially a yoga ball with handles. <clears throat> You're just like at a loss, aren't you? No, maybe about the balls in South Park. It's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Well, the other thing you can do besides having the yoga ball chair is having a standing desk. Yeah. And you have Starla. I do have Starla. Starla is my rolly computer cart. Does Starla still have the picture of the, like, <laughs> the glamour shots? No, I took it off because, like, my boss comes to work and I don't want her to pick on me even more for having a Starla. So, um, I could jack up the, um, the desk part of it to turn it into a standing desk. That is, a th- it does raise and lower, but I'm afraid that if I do that and then it accidentally gets kicked, that everything will go flying off of it because it's not super sturdy. I would say what you do is test it, not with your computer on it. Maybe put a cardboard box on it and then have somebody kick it or you kick it. Mm, nah. Just see how sturdy Maybe it I'll is. Maybe I'll just bounce on the ball. Okay, that too. Standing desks and I like I'll do that. I don't have a standing desk, but I'll put it um if I'm working on something on the legal pad, I'll stand at a counter, I'll stand at somewhere, even like right outside my office store, there's a um kind of a tower. It's not really a bookcase, it's just what would you say call it a rack? The wooden thing? The wooden thing. It's just Shel- like a shelf. Yeah, it's a wooden shelving unit, but I can actually put my legal pad down and stand there and write, so I can get work done standing. Yeah. Uh, I didn't put in a standing desk when I assembled this office, but I was also quite a bit heavier, and the thought of standing that long was just not happening. Now it's like, well, I can do it. Hmm. I wanted to get a standing um, countertop for crafting when I had a larger craft room a long time ago when we lived in Virginia and in Tallahassee. I had the bigger craft space, but... Now we don't really have the space to accommodate that, nor do I spend nearly that much time crafting anything, so it would be like a waste. But well, they, they do you make do those. have your craft table, and you yeah, you don't really spend that. And we've spoken about it before, where you've gone more digital. Yeah. Which has you on a laptop. So then you just need a standing desk to put your laptop at. No. Because, no. I want to be comfy while I'm scrapbooking. <laughs> Watching horror movies? Mm-hmm. So is that what you're doing tomorrow night while I'm out playing four hockey games in a row? Um, I won't be scrapbooking, but I probably will be editing those photos we took today. That works. Yeah. All right, number they, they four. Could be, they could be the last photos of me because, holy cow, four hours of hockey. Actually, it's there's... not funny. There's breaks in between. It's a little funny. No, it's not. Anyways, Star number humor. four. Number four, I've seen you do it this week. <laughs> yeah, just a tad. Why don't you tell us what it is? It's uh, do your reading, your proofing, your draft documents on the move. And I do a lot of this uh, voice to text. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go back and do the uh, spell check and grammar check on it because <laughs> voice to text doesn't always work that well. But it is a great way to get things done. I, I will walk around with documents uh, either on my phone or hard copy and proof them while walking around on the move, pacing back and forth. Maybe... I've tried it on the treadmill. Sometimes I can do it. Voice to text I can do on the treadmill. Uh, occasionally, if I do a lighter spin, if I have my, my bike on a trainer like I just put it on there, I can do it there. I can't. I just can't read uh, on uh, while well, spinning. That It's just not, it's not happening. Treadmill I can usually do if it's larger font, but if it's too small and if I'm running, that doesn't happen. <laughs> But I can do a pretty good pace. So I'll just find a wide open area and walk at a brisk pace while I'm reviewing documents, writing stuff, composing ideas, brainstorming. If I'm doing a first draft, I'll put it that way. I can't do that. It makes me nauseous. Well, yeah, and you don't like to read like when we're in the car with your head down. Nope. Whereas I'll do that. But it's a way of getting getting those steps in, raising your heartbeat. And it's better than nothing. It's definitely better than sitting there or laying on your back doing it. Jessica, what's number five? Number five is one of your favorites. <laughs> Another one of my favorites? Yeah. Use calls as an excuse to walk or pace. I, uh, yeah. You pace so much when you're on the phone. I do, but that's also because I could easily... If I, if I took every phone call seated at a desk, <clears throat> I'd, be at, I'd be seated all day long. Yeah. And so I'll use that just to get up and to pace around, walk kind of at a brisk pace, 
just to keep that movement going. And then it's not wasted time. It's not wasted effort. So then at least when I'm done, I can, if it was a pointless phone call, mm-hmm. one that could have been an email, because <laughs> there's plenty of those, at least I go, well, I got my steps in. I do like to pace around while I'm on the phone. Uh, sometimes I'll get a phone call while I'm at work and I'll go into the conference room and I will do laps around the conference room while I'm talking to whoever's on the other end of that call. It also just it's helps fun. clear my head. It actually does help me focus. Oh. Yeah. But again, I, this is all about getting those that extra movement in, sneaking it in, kind of like hiding the veggies in your food. So, Jessica, number uh, six. Complete training videos on stationary bike or a treadmill. You and I both did that this <laughs> yeah, week. Yeah, we did. Look, there's lots of mandatory trainings. I know when I was, especially when I was doing uh, government contracting, we had to do all these ones, not only just for our company, but whoever the client was. Like, oh my God, it was just mind numbing. And a lot of it is like, well, you can't click the next slide or the next section module mm-hmm. until the one finishes playing. And even with coaching, I had to do these all the time. Actually, every season, I had to do it for the MHSAA, mm-hmm. Michigan High School Athletic Association. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. It's late. It's been a long day. Um, you had to do all these trainings, and so I can either sit there and get a sore butt, or I can get up and move, or get on the treadmill, or do something. Yeah. I did some for the most recent round of the hockey trainings. I actually um, got on the treadmill and then put my laptop, uh, the foosball tables, in front of the treadmill. Mm-hmm. So I put a bar stool on top of the uh the foosball table with my laptop on top and that way it was the perfect height because my tablet the the videos just were not working with my tablet otherwise i would use my tablet up on the treadmill plus i didn't want to have my head down while i was on the treadmill for that long because it was it hurts well it was long we're not talking like a 20 minute video Mm -hmm. so this way i could lift it up roll my shoulders back i didn't get a sore neck Mm -hmm. uh it wasn't tripping on my own feet didn't have sore shoulders and i could look straight ahead and keep that good form I would do with running or running on a treadmill. And then just cranked up the volume to compensate for the, the sound of our treadmill. Yeah. We have to, well, I have to have uh, so many CEUs ac- accumulated every two years. And um, everything's gone virtual. So putting on somebody's hour-long talk is really, really, it's a great thing to do while I'm on my bike with it on the trainer Or if I'm actually using the treadmill to walk, um, I can have that on and get exercise in at the same time. That way it's not just wasted time where I sit and I'm... Because otherwise there's just not enough hours in the day to go to work, right? do your CEUs or required training, Mm -hmm. then do a separate exercise, yeah, and then see your kids and also sleep. It just doesn't all fit. So you've got to layer some things. You have to multitask. And if you can... You know, while you're doing treadmill or cycling training, uh, also do your CEUs. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Two birds, one stone. Yay! Yeah. So that was number six. We've had take the stairs. We've done the move stand reminders. We've done the standing desk or the yoga ball chair. We've done read proof draft documents on the move. Use calls as an excuse to walk or pace. Six was the uh, do the training videos on the stationary bike or treadmill. And Jessica, what is number seven on this list of ways to squeeze in exercise? Instead of Netflix and chill, Netflix and move. I know it doesn't sound as sexy. (laughs) I don't think Netflix and chill is sexy either. I think people are just ridiculous. Uh, It's a really good strategy for netflix but, but anyways yeah. um and whether it's netflix or disney plus or amazon prime yeah, or whatever disney hulu. plus disney plus and chill ew ew no hulu and hulu hoop there we go yeah. um it's all in the hips jesus christ i know anyway uh yeah put on a movie and move put on a movie and get on the treadmill get on the movie and get on your bike yeah. trader put on a movie and just find clear a space in your house where you can walk a path and do a brisk pace i'll do that sometimes where i know like okay i'm gonna be interrupted every 10 or 20 minutes i wouldn't want to get on the treadmill and have to start and stop it all the time but i'll get uh just do a huge a pace and like kid four likes to chase me Mm -hmm. 
which is difficult when I'm doing an about face because there's only so much room in the house. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, now there's this little... There's this tiny little heartbeat there. <laughs> this little like speed bump that like I could definitely trip over. So I got to be aware of where she is, which actually has another piece to it. But it is a way to get that movement. Because instead of just like, oh, you know, I could kick on a TV show and then sit back and put my feet up. How is that helping me? Then you're just being a couch potato. Get up and move. I still get to see the latest movies. Yep. But I'm actually getting some movement in and some exercise in. This is my favorite way to exercise if I'm going to do it in the house, Um, especially with the treadmill. I will pick specific shows that I can only watch while I'm doing the treadmill or now with the bike trainer, since I just got that. This will work for that, too. I can only watch the episodes while I'm doing the exercise, and it's a good motivator for me. And while that works with dedicated exercise sessions too, which we've always done, but it also works well, especially with the pacing part, if you're yeah. not on the trainer or on the treadmill. And that was one thing I always hated because I always wanted to get on and I didn't want to stop. I wanted to do a minimum of 30 minutes. Usually I want to do 60 when I'm on. Mm-hmm. And I always feel like it's a wasted uh, workout if I've got to stop every five or 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But if we kick on the TV in like the living room, I'll pace and okay. And then say you're you're cooking something that's a low and slow simmer that you just got to stir every so often. Mm-hmm. If I was doing an actual dedicated workout and training, I would feel like, oh, I'd be so fresh I wasn't working. But now it's just like, well, this would be dead time, but I'm squeezing something in. I'm getting yeah. some steps in. I'm getting some movement in. Better than just being on my butt. <laughs> so that's number seven, Netflix and move. Not sponsored by Netflix. <laughs> Jessica, number eight. Add aerobic steps to office or home kitchen. And what? these are those little. Oh, no, sorry. I need to reread that. Yeah, okay. Add an aerobic step to the office or home kitchen. So these are those little step things that come in multiple layers. And yeah. Like you just got to think, you think of yourself, if you're trying to envision what we're talking about. Like the Wii Fit. Kind of like a Wii Fit, but I was going to say, put on some leg warmers and listen to, like, get physical in your head. Physical. And now you know what I'm talking about, those little steps you can get. And now you're working a few other muscles. You've got those leg muscles going. You can feel it in your calf. You mm-hmm. can feel it in your quad. And it also helps, like, say, in, like, Jessica's case, where there's um, no steps at work unless you're going down to the creepy basement, which is really just, what, storage and utility it's stuff. Just storage. Yeah. Water heater The water and stuff heater's there. down yeah. there. Furnace. So there's really no point for you to go down there, but you could also just have one at your desk where you can take step up on it, step down. You can put it in the kitchen too while you're cooking dinner. Step up, step down, step up, step down. Check the pasta, make sure the pot's not going to boil over. <clears throat> Stuff like that. Yep. 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 And it just adds another layer uh, to the And you can the increase the size. So once you get really good at doing the tiny step, you can make it a little bit taller and get more of a workout with it. I mean, look, I'm not saying... Do the box jumps in the kitchen where if you miss it, you end up doing a face plant onto a stove. Don't do that. <laughs> no. Jesus Christ. You're just, I'm saying, get one step up. And even if it's just uh, a little step stool, like uh, Kid 1 uses, or not Kid 1, sorry, Kid 4 uses to get up on the toilet because she little. <laughs> uh, but also the kids will use it sometimes to get to higher <laughs> cupboards. Okay, step up, step down, step up, step down. Now you're. it's the equivalent of doing taking the stairs. But you're right there in the kitchen or you're down in your office or wherever. Yep. Just number nine. Number nine is one that I used to do when our kids had swim lessons at the Y. Um, if what? your kids have practice, walk while you wait. This would also be good, uh, I would say, for you while at hockey when you go. Mm-hmm. Now, most of the time I'm there, but I'm also on the ice with them. Yeah. So I'm getting my exercise in. But for you, instead of sitting there freezing your butt off at the rink, start doing horseshoe laps around the rink. One, it would keep you warm. And I'm using mm-hmm. the royal you. Okay, so like, I have done it's... this at the rink before. We'll keep and you warmer. And it kept me warm to a point, and then my toes still went numb. To be fair, uh, when I finished Learn to Play today, after like two hours on the ice, my toes were cold, and they're not usually See, cold. See, it is freakishly cold in there. Well... The weather also changed suddenly. It's gotten very cold outside, which helps it be colder inside. Well, mm. as opposed to when like we're walking into the rink in flip flops and it's like 
man, your electricity bill through must be through the roof to keep this place frozen in Indeed. August. But now we're into late October. We just had a cold front come through. It's cold. It's cold. But to help ward off the cold, you'll be in better, uh, be better off pacing and walking around the rink than you are just sitting in the bleachers and freezing to death. Yep. 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 And the same is true, like, especially if you're... And this helps you meet your steps goal for the day. If you're a soccer or lacrosse mom, even better, because yeah. it's a big... The soccer field is bigger than a hockey rink. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Or whatever else you got going on. Oh, your kid does track. Walk around the outside of the fence. Yep. Get moving. Don't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs going, are they ever going to be done? <laughs> Get some movement in. Get some exercise in. So that was number nine on our list. Just... Marco. Number 10. Number 10. Go old school. Get a push mower instead of a riding mower. Look, so don't go extreme with this, which I did when we moved to Virginia. Remember the lawnmower I bought? I was so proud of it. It was the first lawnmower I ever purchased. It was awful. (laughs) We thought it was going to be so great, and it was just terrible. We were going to be green. We were going to be be so green, and we got an an old... Well, it was, well, brand, it was new. brand new, yeah. but like, you know, an old school push mower without a motor and just the rotating blades. <laughs> yep. They're oh, kind of spiral. Yeah. I mowed the lawn once. Oh, my God. It hurt so bad. In Virginia, like right before we moved. And I said, holy shit. Never again. And I remember like it was, after. It we- wasn't when we moved. It was you did it once before we had kids. Oh, I was swamped at work. Uh, we hadn't had kids yet, but I bought this thing. <laughs> What I learned was if the lawn is too short, well, it's pointless and, you know, it has to be a certain height. Yeah. But if it gets too long, it the grass will wrap up into those spinning blades and then all of a sudden you don't go anywhere. No. And it's like you ran into a brick wall and you take it all in the shoulders. Yeah, it hurts. Um, also, if you have like... You got to get the right speed going too. If so. you have yard critters and they've dug holes or made mountains or something in your in your yard, moles and gophers and yeah, woodchucks, uh, and... all of those bumps or divots are going to be a huge problem with this oh type of mower. Oh my god, there's mower. no shocks. And like, I mean, right now I I mow the lawn with a push mower, but you've got those four wheels down. This thing had two wheels. And so it's a rough ride. Yeah. They, you know, in the movies, they make it look so easy. The man is out there in his cute little outfit and he's just do 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 pushing my little uh, mower here with the little blades going and all the little tiny grass blades just going. And it's so neat and easy. And it's actually not like that at all. But so <laughs> we're not advocating going completely green, old no. school, human powered only. I mean, great. Yeah, it is better for the environment. But you can get an electric push mower, though. Well, the electricity has to come from somewhere. And what do you? Like, yes, better than gas. That is yes. You can, and you can get a solar charger for it. But what I'm point is, in terms of exercise, which is the point of this episode, <laughs> it's better to have the push mo- mower than the big old rider that oh, ha- sure. has the beer holder on it. <laughs> I guess <laughs> they all have cup holders. I know they do. <laughs> We got plenty of neighbors who were out there. Like All of our neighbors have riding mowers. We're like us and the people right next door. And, and no, I guess it's the people on either side so of us. Everybody else has got a rider. Yeah. And like the guy across the street's got the zero turn one. He's out there mowing his lawn every he's, other day. Yes, he's really into his yard. But in terms of exercise, in terms of sneaking that in, getting the <laughs> steps in, getting a little bit more of a workout... It's certainly better if I'm going to be out there for an hour and a half to two hours mowing the lawn, walking, than sitting on my butt mowing the lawn, probably with like you're driving a car or a cocktail. (laughs) Yeah, essentially, (laughs) driving a car. Take breaks to refill your cup. I think that's what people do, right? I don't know. That's still not like the the calories you burn going to refill your drink are not going to offset the beer or what or cocktail you're drinking. I guess. Yeah. Go out now. If you're out there pushing, doing the push mower, though, you are burning some. And you're also going to be too hot to like want to drink. So I don't know. There's times where I finish, especially in the middle of the summer. It's like, I want a beer. A really good lemonade. There you go. So now you can apply this to other things uh, and pretty much anything that's automated. But uh, and it kind of gets back to 
take the stairs, you know, instead of taking the escalator, take the stairs. Instead of taking the moving sidewalk and standing there like it's some sort of ride at Disney at the airport, walk. No way. That is so much fun. <laughs> you know, you're supposed to walk on those things to no, get there it's, faster. It's a, it's a ride. <laughs> oh, my God. No, you're yes, one of those is. awful people. Same thing with the escalators. Like when we were in D.C. and people were like, the tourists are like, oh, look, it's stairs that move. It's like, <laughs> walk, move your ass. It's a ride. We got to get to work. It's a people mover. You don't have to move with the, the people pe- mover. But the people it can move you on the people mover and get there sooner. Nah. Oh. Especially the ones at the airport. That's just a magical experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god especially Jessica. when you get off and like you have all the, <laughs> the forward momentum and you're like whoa i was going so fast without actually walking <laughs> i am all in favor of walking on the moving sidewalk so you get there sooner or walking up the escalator like we did in dc because nah. like got places to go this is not a ride <laughs> But at the airport, though, it is a ride. <laughs> oh, this is why people hate Americans around the world. I don't care. We're all lazy. So don't be lazy. Go out there. In the case of the lawnmower, get the push mower and anything else. If you're doing automated stuff, like you don't need to take your car. Like say your grocery store is down the street. Maybe it's two blocks away. Go walk to the grocery store. Go hop on your bicycle. Move. Same thing. Find ways to squeeze that exercise. And hopefully with this list of 10, we found, gave you at least one that you can add to your daily routine to add a little bit more exercise. Yep. 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 But for now, oh, Jess, I got to be rest up because I got four hockey games tomorrow in a row. And you've got to. And I've got so many horror movies that I need to be well rested for. Yeah, because you got to get up and like Netflix and move. Y- yeah. Yes, I'm going to Netflix and move. I don't necessarily believe you, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably move around. I've got to make dinner for the kids. So that involves walking around. Yeah. Yeah. And chasing them. I mean, so you can have to go back to like the nexus point of the whole house so you can yell, Who, have you packed your lunch yet? It's great. Have you gotten your agenda signed yet? Being a parent is fun. Permission slips ready. Do you have your dirty laundry in the machine? Go over there, start the. Laundry. The answer to all of those questions is no. By the way, from the kids or for you? Uh, from the kids. Yeah. Well, we'll be doing all that, and we'll follow up on it in future episodes. But for now, but for now, this has been episode eighty-five of the Red Arrow Health and Wellness Podcast. We drop episodes on Mondays almost every week. Obviously, not almost. last week. But we've got 84 other episodes to go back and listen to. So please go do that. Uh, For now, though, Jessica, it's been fun. So much fun. Bye. Bye.